Hello, StarCraft fans. This is Falcon Paladin coming to you through the power of the internet. All right. That intro was a little bit different because a subscriber requested that I say that. And hey, why not do what the subscribers say? All right. In the bottom left of Orbital Shipyard, we have the Red Terran player. It is Barcode. And in the top right of Orbital Shipyard, we have the blue Terran player. It is Enix. This is a TV team from lotv.spawningtool.com. I had another subscriber request that I cast a TVT on my channel. It's been a while since I've done one of those. I really honestly kind of try to stay away from mirror matchups. For whatever reason, you guys don't seem to like those as much as the other matchups. Uh, TVT, PvP, and ZVZ, all three of them seem to just kind of be ignored by about half of you guys. I recently hit 2,000 subscribers. I'm so grateful to everybody who supports the channel, who comments, who shares, who hits that like button, who has hit that subscribe so far already. I hope to continue to improve um, and get better and get more subscribers in the future, but we're all in this together, and again, I really appreciate all of the people out there. But anyway, as I was saying, you don't seem to like mirror matchups that much, so here's the TV team, specifically in answer to that request, and I uh, assume it's going to be a pretty good game. I did actually preview this just a little bit, because I didn't run it past my screener at the time. I just went to lotv.spawningtool.com myself, checked it out, and tried to see what was going on, and it seemed like it was pretty interesting. So. We're going to take a look here. This is a Diamond Masters level game, so I hope it's the threshold of awesome for you guys. The APM here is actually pretty nuts. We're looking at about a 236, 230, 200 APM average for each of these players, which is much, much higher than the average APM you'll see um, at this level, or even a little, a little bit higher than this, I think. So excited to see what this means. The SCV comes in to harass the building SCV for barcode. Enix repairing the one that did get hurt. Just scouting around now is the blue SCV. Marine comes out. Some good stutter step here. Might be able to kill it before he can get down that ramp. And oh, so close. Down to three hit points. But still alive. Heading on back home. Running past the Automaton 2000. Hello, Automaton 2000. Nobody ever really bothers with these things. The doodads in this game, I think, or critters rather in this game, do tend to be, um, for the most part, not really molested by players. They're too busy working on other stuff. So double gas from both of these players. They are both going look like a 1-1-1 build. Both have factories that just popped and starports, indeed, starports coming up at the same time. So at this point, we're looking at identical builds. Choosing to wall off at the ramp here is Enix though, while Barcode is not. And choosing to stay in here. Does have a Marine at the top of the ramp just to make sure no more scouting SCVs can get through, but that's about it. So I feel like Barcode's probably intending to be a little bit more aggressive here compared to what Enix wants to do. Enix might be going a little bit more conservative, but at the same time, their builds are pretty much even at this point. Barcode is making a tank, and really the meta for TVT right now is tank drops and marines. The tanks can attack from siege mode immediately after being dropped. Okay, there's a delay. There's like a one or two second delay where they can't quite shoot yet, but it is shorter than having to go from non-siege mode into siege mode, as they had to do previously. So, Terran players are pretty happy about that, and for whatever reason, the tank drops are just insanely good in TBT. If you're good at those, you can win the matchup most of the time. So we'll have to see what both these players are up to. Ooh, Banshee and Cloak coming out here for Enix. So definitely want some Banshees here to deal with it. whatever is coming out of Barcode's camp. Throwing up Widow Mines along the edges, Marines along the edges. Does not want anybody to come up this ramp like a Reaper, perhaps. Has scouted. I don't know why he's expecting a Reaper there, because I don't think... Hmm. Yeah, based on what he saw coming up there, that wouldn't make very much sense. Maybe just worried about drops, which is possibly a big concern here. Where's that medevac? There it is. Medevac coming out with a few marines here. No upgrades on those guys yet. And a tank coming all around the left side, all on its own. Very, very brave to do that. If it ran into some marines here, it'd probably die without putting up too much of a fight. Here comes the boost. Here comes the pick. Oh, wait. There's the pickup. <laughs> As the Banshee trying to get rid of some of these Marines, the Marines saying, no, you don't. You get back here, Banshee. We're going to try to kill you. Some pretty good kiting here, though, from Enix. And trying to use the Marines, to, uh, the Medivac, to get closer to that Banshee to kill it. Interesting play there as well. Very, very micro heavy at this point. The tank in a position to kill anything that comes down that ramp. The Banshee wants to kill the tank as well as any Marines, but is taking shots from the Marines. Is down to, how many hit points here? About 38. Or so, but now has Cloak. Gonna try to get on top. Probably go for the tank first. No, killing Marines first. I guess that's because they're anti-air, so this makes sense. No, Barcode, get out of there. Run, there we go. Finally running after all of the Marines are basically dead. Only one remaining now with one single hit point. Here comes the Siege Tank drop over here on the low ground. Two-shotting that worker. Boom, and basically slowing down the command center with construction. Very, very harshly there. 
Banshee picking up another Marine kill and another Marine kill up to eight kills on that Banshee but the medevac gets killed by the Vikings that were flying around just for that sort of thing the wood of mine also helped with that anti-air the tank trying to run on back home cloak runs out on the first Banshee a Banshee of barcode zone is heading out across the map but they scout each other and is there anything here to deal with his Banshee from Enix uh there are some marines and yeah they might be able to get this guy no stims available if they had stimmed forward and killed it they would have been able to get her but instead no barcode getting a command center with orbital command of his own this base was entirely cancelled so that siege drop did manage to stop the expansion from enix quite harshly there so well played indeed here comes the banshee around the back side there is a missile turret though that's enough to dissuade the banshee for enix to go home and the Banshee for Barcode as well. Didn't really find happy hunting up there. There are just a lot of Marines. A lot of Marines. There are Vikings as well. Widow Mines in random places. You don't really want to fly your Banshee in where there are Widow Mines hanging out. Let's see. How much damage do these guys do? 125 damage. And Banshees have more HP than that. They have about 200, don't they? Where is this? Uh, 140. Okay. So not as much as I thought, but enough to take a Widow Mine shot, which is good because here comes a Widow Mine shot. Oh, the cloak comes in just in time. Just trying to pick off SCVs that are building stuff. SCVs that are just hanging out. SCVs that are getting gas. That's a good choice as well. Oh, the Ravens here with the Vikings, though. That Banshee is not long for the world. Has three kills. Trying to get one more. And, ah, did get a single kill there. Up to four before she died. And the wrecking flames fell to the, the wreckage. And the flames fell to the ground there. So tanks, marines, vikings. This reminds me of Wings of Liberty so very, very much. This is what it was for such a long time back in the early days of StarCraft 2. But anyway, production tab shows we are looking at plus one infantry weapons on the way for both players. Both players are getting tanks and marines. Stim is on the way for Enix. And that command center is just about finished. That orbital command, rather, just about finished. The resources lost tab shows 800 minerals and 325 gas have been lost. For barcode, Enix has lost only 300 minerals and six total gas so far, but has lost five SCVs. So it's 44 to 34 total SCVs. Barcode is up in that department. But again, this base has been running for quite a while longer. A barcode is uh, basically about 75 compared to 83 supply compared to Enix. So Enix hanging on there. Again, Enix has lost five SCVs due to the harassment. Uh, but has really managed to come back in here and has taken the lead in this game, I'd have to say. Wouldn't mind moving out all by itself. Wouldn't mind here. At the bottom of the ramp, it looks like we're preparing to take a third base, or should. We're pushing out. Yeah, there goes that command center for the third. Is there another command center being placed up here? Yes, it is. So both players trying to take a third about the same time. Army flying over the middle, taking the right path, taking the left path. And there's a Banshee over here just kind of hanging out, just watching this robotic arm drill and do its thing. And here comes the Viking. Doesn't really want to deal with those Marines all by its lonesome. Here come the tanks. That should be able to help with that. One Marine stands alone, ends up dead. Another Marine as well gets crushed there. Wrong place, wrong time for those guys. Again, there is a Widow Mine here. The scan did see it, but no, it ran out, unfortunately. And here come the Vikings trying to go after the Vikings of a barcode. And should be enough to get one of them, yes does get the viking is there another one here there is not and that's enough to actually convince barco to retreat taking tank fire on his marines get out of there marines run for your lives a scan seeing where they're going and yeah just backing on out here recognizing he doesn't have the viking count required to really go against what enix is doing at this point so unfortunately again just didn't come with enough anti-air to handle exactly what was coming up from Enix. The tanks, the marine count looks really, really high for Enix. Enix has, let's see here, 41 marines and three tanks. Barcode has four siege tanks and 19 marines, but 51 workers compared to 39 for Enix. So been macroing up quite a bit here. Barcode has the smaller army, but has the third base up and running before Enix does just, just now landing. And is there gonna be a worker transfer here? There is a small worker transfer of looks like a couple SCVs, not that many. Nothing much to worry about. And now with uh, two Vikings, apparently that's enough for Barcode if he likes he has air superiority here. The Marine double tank, triple tank army is coming along the left side and let's see what direction. Oh, Barcode is going along the bottom side and up the right side again. Oh boy, this are they just gonna pass each other? They are. Enix coming around this left side right up to the ramp. Barcode heading up along the right side, going directly to the ramp. No, checking to see if there's a base here first, it looks like. I don't know, they're taking a weird angle regardless. Marching right up that ramp, seeing there's not much defense here. Oh, making quick work of these tanks and these marauders. The tanks are sieging up, really ripping those marines apart. The marines for Enix, though, are mad. They're taking out bunkers, 
barracks. They're going after these workers here and this command center. Meanwhile, Widowmine shot does kill a few things here, has a single kill scan, takes it down. The Marines and the tanks taking out all of these SCVs, forcing a lift off on that command center of their own, trying to get up this ramp now. There are some supply depots in the way. Marines killing more and more SCVs down here at the third base for Barco, just marching right on up into the main. The Marines do have plus one attack. They have medevacs overhead healing. The Vikings are trying to get rid of those medevacs as quickly as they can. They do manage to get one. The Marines' attention does seem to be elsewhere at this point, sieging up the tanks. Meanwhile, the Marines coming right on up into the main base of Barcode and taking out all of these barracks. I don't see anything in the production tab to really stop this from happening. A couple of Marauders is it. And meanwhile, a tank, I think it popped out and immediately died here for Enix. So Barcode crushing this base with a small group of Marines and a large group of tanks here. The Marines moving on down to the second base to make sure the income here does not help anytime soon. The Marines have completely ripped through all the production facilities of barcode at this point okay there are still a couple barracks here but that's about it again splitting off marines down here to kill these scvs they're just trying to run for their lives they're not sure what to do they're scattering they're not receiving specific instructions this command center tried to fly away for enix but guess what the viking tracked that down for barcode it is not long for this world how many workers are left for both of these players only 10 and 8 down to 9 i don't see any scvs escaping both actually building Trying to plant bases elsewhere, building a command center here is Enix Barcode, maybe trying to land here, maybe landing over here. Uh, a little bit safer, I have to suppose, but is it a good old-fashioned base race? These Marauders actually did manage to kill a single Marine before they ended up getting killed, but the Marines were too strong, especially with the Stim and the Medivax. Overhead, Supply Depots getting burned on down refineries at the same time. Supply Depots for Enix getting hit by tank fire as well. Production facilities for Enix heading on to the west. Go west, young man. It is safe there for you. Refinery here somehow managed to escape the massacre. And this command center about 60% complete. This one still hasn't landed for barcode. So maybe a little bit worried about that here. But Enix is actually supply blocked. Wait, wait, wait. Does Enix... Why does it not... Does Enix not have any supply left over at all? He really doesn't do... I guess command centers don't count if they're in the air, it looks like. Because this should be providing some supply. Nope, that's a red command center. Hold up, hold up. Blue. Blue, blue, blue. Okay, that did finish. There we are, up to 15 supply now. Wow, for a second there, Enix had absolutely zero supply. I don't know if I've seen that before. Units tab shows barcode is left with five medevacs, a viking, five tanks, two marauders, and seven marines. Meanwhile, the Viking does manage to find one of Enix's medevacs that does boost away. Enix has a Widow Mine, four medevacs, a Banshee, three tanks, and 39 Marines. Enix, I feel like, has the upper hand here, moving the army back to protect the single base that is available and also throwing down the production facilities on the other side of the map. Probably going to go for some more Banshees here. A single Marine does find this command center for barcode, but the army crushing a few units there that widow mine does have three kills and does manage to survive somehow anyway the high ground advantage is here to enix the marines moving on down trying to burn through these tanks all oh, making quick work of them that is just so many marines the medevacs falling to the ground at the same time barcode throwing out the salt enix with the gg and a good luck to barcode from barcode and that's it is defeated enix is victorious and barcode has left the game so very, very close there in the end. Again, the units tab shows all that was left for Enix are 32 Marines, two tanks, and a Banshee. I guess a Widow Mine as well. This guy somehow survived despite getting scanned and the army sitting right on top of him. But pretty fantastic stuff. Again, when it comes down to a base race, it just kind of depends on who has the bigger army. Uh, Terran players can float their buildings away. You'll notice that barcode had <laughs> buildings all over the place just in case he needed them. Just flying out to the different corners of the map. But in the end, he did not. Uh, it didn't really matter in the long run. His army got decimated, and this was left. So pretty fantastic stuff from both of these players. Thanks again to lotv.spawningtool.com. Please check them out if you want more StarCraft II Legacy of the Void replays. They're a good resource for that. Upload your own games over there. If they're good enough, I might see them without, having you, without you having to email them to me which might be a bit of a shortcut. So either way, thank you so much for watching today. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe. If you like what you saw and what you heard, you can join the other 2,000 subscribers on my channel. Again, thank you to everyone who has made that possible. And until next time, as always, you take care of yourself.